There are quite the substantial number of leaders in Civilization VI now. In fact, there are about... Well over 10, and I'm gonna be putting them all in a tier list in alphabetical order. This is the moment where I tell you the tier list is of my own volition, based on my own past experiences, ethics, and morals, but it's not. This is objective, and if you don't agree with it, you are objectively, scientifically, proven to be in the wrong, and are literally Hitler. Abe looks to have five pictures with Epstein and 11 groping allegations struggling to come to light, but that's not the only thing being buried. I want whoever created the leader ability to release their methodology, because the loyalty gimmick was assuredly a developer procrastinating until the last second and having to quickly rub two brain cells together to save their job. Let's see, slavery, civil war, civil war from no lawyer, holy shit my cock is throbbing, this is brilliant. The melee unit thing is a watered down version of Big Dilf Daddy Basil, but it is serviceable. Needless to say, the American abilities are good enough to carry any victory type, unless your cities have 10 plantations or something. Uh oh. <laughs> leading to rebels with fairly weak labor laws. B tier. He could be producing 10 science per turn, but through taking inspiration from research units 731, drugging and experimenting on captive civilians, through implied consent of course, before using those findings to creatively rearrange your army's skeletal structures, using advanced units coming at you with malicious intent. Well, personally, that's enough to persuade me. And if you get a snowball rolling while securing fascism, let's just say a new Anne Frank's gonna be dropping. S Tier. I've never been witness to someone with the neck strength of a minotaur. The bountiful collection of fat around your neck is for more than scaring off predators, being sturdy enough to hang on to what I assume to be your nation's gold reserve smelted into ornaments, and to move around as if not to be bothered by it, truly constructed in an alternative manner. The archers are outlawed by various articles of the Geneva Convention, and having to go against them will result in your life expectancy matching that of the main character in a drone strike video. Everything is dependent on the pyramid and if you can get one adjacent to your city whilst making Germany insecure in the process. S tier. The Pringles mascot who looks to have honed his body through years of combat experience from beating his wife possesses a rather unique unit but the civ ability is start reliant. The leader ability and opidum more than make up for it is not only as a human centipede a viable strategy for MB orcs, but with opidums you can research man at arms and medieval weaponry before learning what iron is. Now the specific logistics of that evade me but I'm sure it's something that makes perfect sense scientifically. A tier. I understand why they didn't put an accurate depiction of Ba in the game, would be too distracting otherwise. But that distraction may be needed. She says it's hero time and turns into Afghanistan of the Marsh like a Ben 10 alien leaving the poor conscripts to throat the nearest mosquito colony, hoping to contract cholera as a superior option when compared with the certain death of charging her elephants in a forest. This ability with her crossbows is objectively bad, but mildly entertaining to perform. The fan surrounded by districts is the most brain-dead culture victory I've ever had the pleasure of playing. Using her giant ranged elephants, you can declare war, walk into forest, refuse to leave nor elaborate, and pillage till the enemy is willing to offer all of their gold, luxuries, art, wives for your withdrawal. A tier. This just in, we have live footage of Basil resizing the rectum of the inhabitants in a local walled settlement. Dogmas are a second stacking great general, plus 10 is an era ahead by the way, and by implanting pure titanium into their horses' heads, you are the battering ram. Creating such a weapon of mass destruction, you'll be looking like Oppenheimer suffering from PTSD. An automatic religion essentially, and free units by holding a few horse races, not to add that crusade will give you plus 10 in enemy cities following your religion. Easy to do since your cavalry turns into late stage abortion devices, massacring entire armies so hard the inhabitants of the nearest city go. Yeah, you know, maybe the Byzantines have religion right after all. Easily S-tier and top of S-tier, no doubt. Both Catherines are essentially the same aside from their dress. I mean, I know I said Catherine could use a makeover, give me some color, but I wanted a paint job, not an acid trip. Goth Cat gets extra Diplo visibility, which is nice for Emperor and Below, plus multiplayer for early wars, but the other collects luxuries like Pokemon cards and shows them off at the court festivals. The marketing ability to have people from all across the globe come to your cities to view 
their luxuries, Bountiful at Home is nothing short of a master stroke. Grand Tour and Chateaus are much better for the cosplayer Catherine, while Guard Imperials let you look at the continents tab and think, it looks French enough to me. There is one drawback, however, rather critical in the fact that they are French, meaning Black Queen gets C tier, and you ain't fooling anybody with that mask gets A tier. Indian Giga Chat variant has a unique war goal far away from their unique unit on the tech tree, which is also quite good, and late enough to where everyone will have walls, making it less effective than it could be. Make no mistake, the differences between being banned under internationally recognized treaties and causing untold devastation, but legally on the OP scale. With their move speed and great general, you assuredly have time to secure. It's not bad, especially when you have enemy units looking up to your elephants, holding back the urge to empty their fecal content. B tier. The two variants of Hot Damn and <laughs> are dependent on production and floodplains. Chariot archers cost a left arm, but will provide you with numerous left arms from their victims. Eteru and Sphinx are fantastic for culture, which Hoppy's arrival synergizes well with. And the other is nice to get rich, but I mean, giving food is kind of a negative overall. Also, original Cleo's agenda makes no sense. If your army is smaller than hers, you're gonna have her army at your borders, ready to charge you for felonous lacking. Hot damn! Get C tier, and oh my God! gets B tier. The Cassus Belli Putin thought he had lets Persia declare wars through no justifications whatsoever and suffer limited repercussions. By exercising this disingenuous form of mental gymnastics, you get two move speed whenever you want and immortals are Yu-Gi-Oh monsters after someone fused together an archer and a swordsman being two of the best units in this game, legally constituting a hate crime if you send any of these at anybody. Satrapies and the improvement give culture and gold for maintenance and eventually getting the hate crime ideology is much easier, which is fitting considering the Immortals. A tier. Kothans give production to settlers is automatically at least C tier, goodness me. I'm expecting all their other abilities to help craft the most dominant S tier Civ since Shaka and Civ 5. So long as they're somewhat serviceable abilities, that should pose no problem. Trade routes from government bill- No. Byremes are- well, no. My stability is no. The Kothans are the Bugatti in a mobile home anywhere else C tier. Eleanor is literally the virgin Giga Chad meme. The only thing to get excited for with English Eleanor is thinking you'll get Cinnabons for about two seconds when she walks in. The hairdo will still constitute an optimal distraction for when you're getting rammed violently by a semi-competent player. None of her abilities mesh. On an archipelago, I could see B just because of the dockyards. If you get coal, it's really nice, but not enough to really count interact anything else. French Eleanor gives you wonder construction speed and chateaus making the Great Works ability much better. F tier for Princess Leia and A tier for other Eleanor. Would you be interested in a trade agreement with England? You're willing to give me an archipelago map? Sure, just keep your kid away from me. Her leader ability is a dude's legacy. Even under woman leaders, that's another W for the boys. Islands she gets A tier, maybe S. Overall, I think I'll just give her C tier. Hansas in the extra district are already S tier. Play them in the Olympics and you'll get banned for anabolic steroid use. The military slot is fine. City state bonus lets you roleplay Hitler and declare war on everybody if that's your thing. Overall, S tier. The noodle arms. The hairline resembling Yosemite Mountain. The chiseled physique. Thousands of years of evolution is rendered imperfectly optimized for combat in this environment. Dude is a religious whore. He'd take you out back and suck you dry, zip up your pants when he's done just for the chance to look at a religion. And if you're willing to manage Dharma to get every follower belief imaginable, I'd imagine he's great. But I don't have that type of patience. Varu aren't really anything more than a deterrent or, if need be, can't catch a few bodies. Faith is great if you can meet someone early for religious settlements and Stepwells helps for faith. If Stepwells gave doors him, he'd probably get A tier, but if you can manage all those beliefs, still A, maybe B. As for my constant need to stay stimulated, I'll ignore the lack of Subway Surfers gameplay and give him a C tier. The man who can identify pepper spray by taste possesses one of the best cavalry armies under his command. You will need to hard build Keshigs, but they're worth it, as is stealing cavalry with your own combat strength and diplo bonus. A tier. A literal bro. The 700 pound assault weapon with attachment issues is SSS tier. A perfectly crafted genetic specimen. We tested his DNA and found it wasn't DNA, it was NBA. Get some shots up, LeBron needs you next season. Unfortunately, the abilities don't reflect the average TCLR subscriber physique.
He's the most powerful sieve for all of 10 turns until war carts become obsolete. Know your fucking place. Trash. Then you're left with hoping to have enough food to work ziggurats. Whilst crossing your fingers that some barb camps prove useful. D tier. Coasts turn into fantastic places for districts and extra yields, including tourism and her leader ability sounds like something your top only fan patron would come up with. But it is fitting, but her page is less nudes and more so watching coastal cities get railed by a fleet that was somehow prayed into existence. Put an escort on the frigates and you'll have a newfound taste for masochism. B tier. Before, she was decent. Culture from combat, nice. Hoplites, okay, mild. Acropolis, eh, not as effective as Pericles is, but acceptable. Wildcard is good, but not great. I'll give her C tier. One combat strength for every military card you slotted. What? what's your emergency? I'd like to report a crime. A tier. Yeah. You hear that? Production cost building is included in the initial construction for free. It's so Jover. Is the Palgum. It replaces the watermill and provides additional housing and production. It also increases the food yield from freshwater tiles. It's never been more Jover than it is right now. With this ability, Eurekas provide all of the science needed for technologies. It's even more Jover than was previously thought possible. Amurabi tier. Another dual wielder preying on innocent monasteries during the day and playing Byzantium and only Byzantium during EU4 at night. The man whose IQ is readable on the minute section of a clock also jacks off to the Ottomans getting schlumped in World War I as S tier on a coastal map with plentiful sea resources and raiding targets. The healing is underrated. Again, the logistics of growing trees to repair their boats in the middle of the ocean continues to evade the loss of science. The second berserkers step into enemy territory, they get the hitch for homicide, turning into the stuff of nightmares. Until it's their turn. Let's see what the Byzanto file possesses. Varingian gets levied units and yields from killing with levies. See how you feel with this is 18 inches deep inside. Get the loop. Actually, fuck the loop. Let's dry dock it. Askeladd gets C tier. It is never nor will be ever called Istanbul gets A tier. It's sad to say I used to be a disbeliever of Japan. Cheaper districts and adjacency from touching other districts. Add that to samurai being now upgradable and requiring culture instead of science and you might have S tier, but I'll play it safe and say top of A tier. Would have gotten a monstrous culture victory last video if the AI actually built religious units. I will try to be objective despite the horniness purveying my body, but after snapping as many snapshots as my PC's hard drive will allow, I can tell you if you could get relics, she's great. Culture bombing when you don't found a religion is rough and you get no bonuses to finding God. The czars are nice, but super Suki nice are the most consistent thing she gets. I'll give her C tier just cause you need a way to find relics to fully utilize her abilities. He lives a simple life. Eat, pray, procreate, procreate again. Really nail the procreation segment, my goodness. Bring in tourists who have to see the lack of refractory period for themselves to believe it, winning a tourism victory through the Viagra. Introduced to the bloodline after humans escaped Africa. With multiple religious beliefs being incredible on him to boot like crusade where your biological siege equipment probably puts you about here in regards to animal labor abuse. He gets S tier. The best trade routes in the game, if the city is on a coast or harbor that is. Shit can be one tile and land and your boys will go, ah, nah, 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 we'll pay you in diamonds. Yeah, I'd have to walk. You think this can could support my 350 pound physique? Yeah, I'm going home. Trade routes are not limited by number of cities, but by your CPU's processing power. And the only archipelago sieve with substantial science output? Better than Babylon on archipelago, be your C tier everywhere else, I'll put them in highest of A tiers. It's quite the arduous challenge, convincing people to come slaughter your populace, but by building units until there's one turn left remaining on the production cost, they won't be able to resist. And that's when you bring out the emus and seven foot spiders. Coastal housing and adjacencies along with outbacks and a really strong infantry replacement for no resource costs puts him in A tier. They did my boy dirty with his leader ability. I came, I saw, I conquered. The more accurate description is, I arrived, I observed, I subdued. Absolutely nobody. By the time you get the gold, you get at best a free builder, and even then, your legions may be strong, but you have no bonuses to carry on to the next era. B tier, but only because Rome abilities are 
so good. Getting to Christina, who is easily a strong seven if you're fresh out of prison, let's just say it's a good thing she can read, because there's no way she's getting a sugar daddy anytime soon. That doesn't stop her from being everybody's sugar daddies, giving everyone the Nobel Prizes, the ability, which is handy for science, but culture is where you really shine. Just settle a city in every part of the globe, build the museums, bibliotheque is underwhelming, but the theming bonus is muy bien, B tier. I would not let my pie cool on a windowsill near this guy. He'd smell it and start floating towards it. I also wouldn't feel confident picking Kublai Khan against a fetus in a Squid Game Civ 6 segment. One economic slot and a few Eurekas are not worth completely gutting China's playstyle. That's an F tier. Mongolia's is a little better since you automatically get your seven or so Eurekas and inspirations. Not to mention Mongolia's reserved for war criminals, even without Genghis. B tier. The Skid Row crackhead of a 12 year old's GTA character is one of the only good naval tourism civs. Archipelago is probably S tier just cause shipbuilding from turn one is quite game shattering. I don't know if Moray makes up for a literacy rate of zero, but I'll assume it does. I'm like, what do you say fuck me for? And skip over the fact that Firaxis Loki threw some shade against the Maui. Oh no, nigga. That's just the tip of this eye, buddy. Read, nigga! Read! No! See, overall, the only people who've biologically evolved without the need to consume water wanting their cities in as tight a formation as possible. I never knew daddy issues could be so prevalent among a population so as to be considered endemic, but these numbers don't lie. Fairly beginner friendly, don't need to worry about the AI forward settling, big defensive bonuses, especially early with your archers. Production late game and flat plains with farms all around is a suboptimal position though. B tier. Playing Latoro in the Dramatic Ages game mode is like putting Carl Malone in a 7th grade all-female classroom. Dangerous and some might say unethical, he can turn Babylon into his fuck toy in that very specific mode, but Tokui is still effective if you can capture a few cities. Chimimal tea is calm and soothing as opposed to this abomination. Add in an overall decent unique unit, eh, overall low B tier. Hansa's extra district, that's already A tier, let's see how his unique ability- Place wonders and theater squares, beeline castles, you can win in the classical era. If you spawn straight in a desert biome, you're automatically S tier. Problem is, early game sucks, due in part to the desert, as well as production and molly resembling oil and water. You'd have a better shot taking the diplomats who were trying to bring peace between Israel and Palestine and trying to get them to make peace between the Crips and Bloods. However, if you can make it past the early game, you'll charge interest on your interest's interest. B tier. Levied units with 5 move speed if you include a great general is insane. You'll be out sprinting horses at that point in Himiko. Himiko? You'll have the entire levied core zooming. Pearl of the Danube and thermal baths help with domestic issues and the two cavalry units can upgrade into each other which is great. Uh, but Hazar's less so, cause I don't think you'll find many allies willing to work with you when you've turned half the world into your bottom bitch. S tier. Every city on a hill LARPs as Void Singers with multiple ways to generate faith, and the actual Void Singers showing up to your LARP event? It's like you put the rock in an anabolic steroid chamber for three years. Adam come out looking like the super borderland psycho pinned cum, and whilst defending mountains he turns into Bill Cosby. But instead of slipping something into your drink, something is slipping into your stink. Easiest S tier of my life. The strange man tweaking on crystal meth has about five sentences total. Could bring your five-year-old to come practice their reading skills with how little text his abilities take. Could also distract them with the scary man running around in peacock feathers, possessing a strange play style. Run around with eagle warriors, jaguar warrior supremacy by the way, turn enemy units into canonical slaves. That's right, Civ 6 has a slavery mechanic, actually no joke at all. A big reason why I have to be very peculiar about the civs I pick whenever I'm playing Montezuma. Luxury bonus and spaceports in five turns helps in the late game, so B tier. No religion, but copies the bonuses of one that becomes dominant, which is a little scary, but Casey gives you more great people points and extra slots and yields for relics. Out here proving he can challenge the best of them to a culture victory, but is mentally challenged in regards to religion, truly built different. The Swordsman is Loki a top 10 unit. Banza means you'll never have to worry about urban sprawl or food again. Overall B tier. Persia's abilities are nice and the five combat strength on full health units is so 
good. Battles are unlosable with this affluent fashionista. Add in sanctions being unable to hurt you late game and he gets an easy B tier. Literally Lady Thick Thighs Mark II, possessing the handicapped Congo's abilities while retaining the ability to found a religion. You can have your cake, eat it too, and fuck the baker, having what can only be described as a cultural weapon of mass destruction. Add in some oil and you can already hear the US Army hiring Hammurabi to send in the flying fortresses. S tier. Y yeah, I ain't reading all that. Yeah, happy for you, or sorry it happened. Terrace farms and mountains are extremely powerful, giving you food and production for science victories, even culture if you're feeling creative. Warcocks are good defensive units with their double hits, so overall A tier. My god, the drip is immaculate. There's a reason he's the main character on both my channels. Must be the main character in Civ 2. He gets as many great people as Civ life or subscribers get bitches. Rainforests turn from unwanted habitats of malaria to, you know what, honey? Dysentery isn't so bad. Let's go visit Brazil. Battleships before the concept of battleships are even theorized. The entertainment districts are good when you're going culture. Overall high A tier. Well, if you need something else to keep your kids busy for a few seconds, here you go. Wouldn't let them within 200 feet of a school zone, though. On second thought, that fear is probably unfounded considering he looks like he needs to perform routine maintenance checks on his dick, make sure it's in working order and systems are all functioning at baseline levels. The Acropolis synergizes with the leader ability, so I'll give him B tier. Bro is ready and willing to launch a special cultural operation anytime, anywhere. Even skip that latest Mario Party game to partake. The secure first pantheon in Tundra, Slavers are cheap enough to guarantee a great profit as well as a golden age allowing you to purchase settlers with faith. By the time the AI finds out what strange concepts such as art and music are, you'll already have a monopoly. High S tier. Remember when he was a poor man's Jow? Well, Treasure Fleets is more than enough to make even Pepperidge Farms forget with insane trade routes as well as production to cities founded far away from your empire. Recreating the Reconquista is easier than ever as he graciously helps people who haven't found God yet by introducing them to him. Overall, high A tier. Not really sure what you're supposed to do with Poundmaker. He has a unique unit, but it's a scout. <laughs> Civ ability is nice to have. Miki Wops are all right. Honestly, he's here to just make friends instead of win. I can respect that. C tier. Two chins. The first one works on making sure you get every wonder imaginable and all the Eurekas they entail. Great Wall is unbelievable late game and on the opposite end of the spectrum, the Crouching Tiger is used as dental floss by every other unit. If I ever lost a 1v1 to a dude utilizing Crouching Tigers, I'm not standing for that. I gotta get it back in blood. Don't come to school next day type B. After reading stories about great conquerors and thinking his fat ass wouldn't crush a horse without needing the Radagon buff, he decided to don the world's only XXXXL armor while avoiding numerous porn sites and Twitter in the search process. He spends his days converting barbs to allies, which is a decent ability to have, but really annoying when he gets pissed you clear encampments. Oh, sorry, Sun Tzu, I'll just let the bevy of advanced units fuck my people instead. Overall, B tier for Administrator Quinn, D tier for the LARPer. James Charles is fairly good at culture, or at least getting through the civic tree, which can lend itself well to science. But with Egypt's other abilities and all those wonders you'll have, production notwithstanding is going to make you a top tier culture civ. A tier. If you can keep your cities happy or even ecstatic, that 5-10% to boost for everything science and great people related will be monumental. I'd rather serve Gordon Ramsay literal diarrhea post Taco Bell than have to actually use the Highlander in a game. Worst you, you in existence. I'm not even joking. My worst fear is getting sentenced to five years hard labor of winning domination victories with Scottish Highlanders. Liberation could ease the pain in that, especially if you forward settle a city, let the AI take it, and then keep declaring war every 20 turns or so for the boost. Never tested that before, but should work. Hi, A tier. Sultan is just another word for conversion therapy. Converting entire armies to corpses. Fairly certain I had a video where I turned a horseman into a tank in regards to combat strength. If you've never been to college, just play Saladin and catch bodies. You'll get a first degree for sure. Imagine you're in an M1 Abrams. You'll look down your sights and see Saladin's forces on camel coming at you at mock Allah. The other Saladin is still really strong, but not as. Cheap warship buildings, 10% to the yields that are most important and hardest to get, not to mention the automatic profit, meaning you don't have to go astrology till you're ready. Mamluks are nice, Medrasas are OP in a religious science game. Overall,
Paul Sultan gets S tier, Vizier gets A tier. Angle is gonna be crazy when you're making 2000 science late game. Research your first information air attack and get more pop-ups than illegal sports streaming sites. Korea's abilities are already jaw-dropping, mouth-watering. Porn after five years in a chastity cage is less exhilarating, S tier. And Sion Diok has the better leader ability. That 3% upgrade is more cost-effective than Sejong, so she also gets S tier. MPs are nowhere near their back-breaking, game-winning solo primes in Civ 5 or Shaka was their Byzantium. I would say Babylon, but even Shaka wasn't strong enough to bomb subsistence farmers with flying for- What do you mean production stopped because I have negative 75 happiness? The early cores and armies, cheaper cores and army- You know what? Adam free! Horse and armies, overall A tier. Commandantes are completely unfair and various other YouTube clickbait thumbnail phrases, especially mid-game with Yaneros when you've saved up four or five of them, ensuring you won't lose a single one of those S tier unique units who wish to be in closer proximity with each other than the US Navy personnel. The extra move speed on land is the true MVP. Declare war and leave the enemy looking like flashbang victims with your speed. The legality of such maneuvers is up for debate, but the results are not. Haciendas give you everything you need for world domination, production, gold, food, overall S tier. Kanuni must be Turkish for late stage abortion device. Janissaries, bazaars, and great Turkish bombards are all S tier abilities. Add that in with Ibrahim and his getting of the bombards, this may be the best domination civ in the game. Not to mention how completely and utterly insane the Yanisaries are. Magnificence is... Uh, okay, they race swapped him for some reason, but that hasn't left me as distraught as swapping his abilities. No Ibrahim, no Janissaries, instead you get bonuses to a Golden Age, which in most games you'll be able to make use of for half the time at best. The 4 combat strength against other civs not in Golden Ages is fine, but doesn't really synergize well with anything else, and two of the three best abilities were substituted for mid. But overall, Kanuni S tier, Magnificent C tier. Great people are cheaper, and markets double as museums. Uh, they give some golden production, although okay. the Molly early D tier. <laughs> <laughs> who lives in a pineapple under the sea. The faith from kills and unique units are pretty good. It pretty much depends if you can get and stay in a permanent golden age or not. Her walls go from Tyrone to Timmy. Overall, the best thing about Tamara is still that industrial grade car crusher. Also known as her jawline C tier. Teddy's got two iterations. One of them is completely disgusting and needs to be sent to a research lab to study how a specimen such as this is constructed, truly built different. The other one looks at the continents tab and says, well, well you know, Andrew Jackson kind of had a point. It's nice. How's the specimen doing? S tier and C tier. I still have no idea how that gingerbread house is keeping all that hair in place. Is it tied in a bun? If I take it out, will her hair fall down like she was in a Disney show and took off her glasses? The possibilities are endless. But I'm not left as confused as you'll be when you construct a few holy sites, blink, and all of a sudden you've won a culture victory at turn 7, A tier. I'm led to believe Bakugan means isolationism in Japan, because the best way to play is to lock your doors and never take that sock off. Have them thinking you got J of Armin in there. Keep every city within six tiles and send a caravan of traders to each one, A tier. This game has led me to believe Tamira led a gang of cannibals IRL. They see red when they smell blood, track them like a shark and feast on their remains like vampires. You can also double up every horseman you build. Yes, I say horsemen because the horse archers are so fragile they either kill your target with one range, mind you, or they're gonna be staring at an almighty god slap that'll wake them up too. Hey, you, You're finally awake. A tier. The superior Roman gets a free monument in every city. And free roads. And free SS officers. So what you'll be doing with these legions will have you contemplating whether the hog will take the following order's excuse a little more leniently this time. A tier. We got Queen Victoria and Sherlock Holmes's latest conundrum. Pax Britannica can be hit or miss, S tier on Archipelago, D tier everywhere else, just like with every other English ability. But the moment she dons her evil costume and starts going one on one against Sherlock, she gets a 10% boost for every industrial era building in that city, 30% in total, and even more from strategics. C tier for Queen, A tier for The Handmaiden's Tale. The recently paroled sex offender who looks like he's gonna die last week has a unique skill said better at making tundras habitable in comparison to Russia. Can't get surprise ward and with the AI most games trying to fire their two neurons shared amongst themselves leading to an even worse disaster than the Challenger space shuttle. Well let's just say a disarmed city isn't such a bad idea. 
The tourism favors thing is unique, but the favors are so little it doesn't matter unless you get 500 to 1,000 tourism at least, which at that point you're already winning a culture victory. The ice hockey rink and Mounties are gimmicks at best, really spat on the face of Canadians with that one. Although the national parks are really good if you settle high appeal areas, I'll give Canada C tier. I've heard of Dutch disease before, but I never thought it got this bad. Characterized by nausea, cold sweats, inflammation, and immediately feeling the need to start manufacturing everything. The only really good ability in most games gives you more production at times than Germany or Evil Victoria. Trade routes are... eh. Uh, polders are nice but hard to get in large numbers. Uh, A tier. Offensive spies are better, and every time you complete an operation, you get 50% of the target's yields. You also get a spy from defensive tactics. Uh, listen, I'ma keep it a buck. I played her maybe twice, and you don't have the spy numbers for the ability to matter too much, although it is a lot better than Kublai Khan, C tier. Every Chinese save has been worse than the original Chin Chi Huang, and he came out like eight years ago. Can we finally get a- oh. Uh, who made this burger, do I? Get to 10 population and could do it faster if you use your project and get 20 gold, 10 science, and 10 culture per city. For 10 cities, that's 200, 100, and 100 respectively. That- that is... Let me sit down and catch my breath, damn. There's no limit to this hostile act against game balance. He's going into S tier. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want down below in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe, tell me what you think about the tier list, and check out these other videos and the second channel. See y'all next time. Peace.